reconvene the Parker Town Council meeting at 7.02 p.m. All council members are present with the exception of Councilman John Dyack and Councilwoman Renee Williams. Um, if you everyone could rise and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. As we honor our nation, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and before we get going, Council, I've got a statement here real quick. Um, thank you all for attending the Parker Town Council meeting. Rob, this is kind of for you, because you're the only like non-staff person I see out there. Thank you for attending the Parker Town Council meeting. As you are all aware, COVID-19 has spread to Douglas County. The town is certainly aware of and concerned about the effects of this virus on our residents. As it relates to this meeting, Please know that this meeting and all regular town council meetings are live streamed on Facebook. Thank you, Mr. Tom Barr in the back room. Um, for those of you who are in attendance, again, Rob, this is to you. Do not <laughs> approach the dais. Do not. That came out very bad. I didn't mean it to sound so negative. It was like, <laughs> do not approach the dais. Do attempt to maintain a distance of six feet of separation from others. If you do not feel well, please leave the meeting and watch the meeting on Facebook Live. And vacate town hall immediately upon meeting adjournment. Town staff has wiped down the podium with disinfectant wipes and, has additionally, and, and additional wipes and hand sanitizer available for use at the podium. Please use only the wipes and sanitizer at the podium and do not take them with you. Rob, if we see you take them, there's, I mean, just say he's looking to make sure if we have an office, yeah, chief's going to tackle you down. We appreciate your attendance at the town council meeting and your cooperation. Um, first item on the agenda was our special presentation, but that's been moved to a date, or a, not a date certain, but it's, it's being rescheduled, correct? All right. So then the next item is public comment. For this meeting only, because we're getting our brains wrapped around um, virtual meetings and stuff like that, there was an opportunity for citizens who wanted to submit items for general public comment could have done it today, earlier today, before five o'clock. We did not receive any that came in. Um, however, we do have one member of the public, uh, Rob Tennis, is here for public comment. So, young man, the opportunity is yours. I'll open up public comment at 7.05 p.m. You can come up to the dais, or excuse me, don't come up to the dais. I told you, don't come to the dais. You can come to the podium. But um, there's a three minute time limit. You know, you can see the thing, the clock above me. You know how this game works. You've been around the block. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a few times. And you know, I know I'm like, he brought his cane up. Is he going to like wrap me on the forehead with the cane? You know? Um, no, actually, we, it's a sword. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you don't need to do your uh, address. We have it on the form you filled out. So you can right. go ahead and start. All right. No, I just wanted to make a comment on uh, this one article that was in the, uh, the talk of the town uh, about the um, veterans memorial banners, which I, I, I'm very pleased that you guys are starting something like that. But I would like to uh, make a suggestion as to, um, <clears throat> I think it should be, I mean, it's, it says here, first priority will be given to veterans from incorporated Parker, followed by those who lived in the 80134 and 80138 zip codes. But um, as some of us that have lived in the both of those zip codes for over half a century, uh, that I think that's kind of sliding the ones that actually don't live in the town. Um, so um, I would just ask that uh, council would maybe take something like that into consideration, the amount of time they've lived here, even though they don't, you know, necessarily live in the town, but they might have lived. I'm just using my dad for an example. He's lived here for 52 years, but he's never lived in the town. He lives a mile away that way. So, and uh, a dear friend of ours, uh, Ken Hughes, who lived up there too, that we just buried last week, who is a Bronze Star winner in the Korean War, um, you know, by, by this, he would go down the list, even though he's lived here for 51 years, you know, the family. So I would just ask that um, council use something like that to add into their, their consideration as to who would, I mean, 
money is money, you know, and if they're residents, is I would I would just soon see older residents rather than someone that moved here for, for a month to be near their family, but lived in the town and then get top preference, kind of thing. And that's all I'm going to say. I've been out for three and a, almost three and a half months with this knee replacement. Today was my first day back to work, and I am tired. So <laughs> I'm going right. home, and I'm going to bed. Thanks, Thank Rob. Sir. Appreciate it. Good, Good to see you. Bob. And so, just so you're aware, th this is a pilot program. This is the first time, so that consideration will be made. And I do want to go ahead and put it out there that the um, – Foreign Legion post in Parker has stepped up and will be paying for the first 14 of those banners that are put up as opposed to the individuals needing to pay for it. Well, I might, you so. know, because uh, Kurt Hughes, Ken's uh, son, he owns the Pine Lane Nursery. Right. Um, and I don't think, I don't know if they're aware of it. I mean, I might. Yeah. It is brand new. We just, is council just approved it. And like I said, it's a pilot program this year, so they're going to be looking at how it runs yeah. and what things we can adjust. So thank you very much for your input. That would, that would be my adjustment. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Go wash your hands. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs> All right. So next item up, we have uh, reports, items, and comments from mayor and council. Council, would you allow me to just go ahead and move over that and get right to the meeting since we, so we can get out and wash our hands? Um, next item up is our consent agenda, items 5A through 5D. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with one motion and one vote, unless a council member asks to have something removed for discussion. Ordinances on the consent agenda are for introduction only and will not be removed. So council, before you have uh, consent agenda items 5A through 5D. I move to approve consent agenda items 5A through 5D, please. I'll second that. Motion by Josh and a second by Cheryl. Council, in just a sec, your screens will open up. And you can make your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item 6A. This is a public hearing for ordinance number 1.539.1 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to adopt the 2020 revised budget for the town of Parker and to make appropriations for the same. Mary Lou. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Well, this is the last action um, from some aspects of the 2020 budget. So just like all of our um, activities with the budget, this takes two readings. The first reading for this item was held on March 2nd. Tonight is the second reading and is a public hearing. So included in this ordinance are two parts. The first one is um, are those items that are carried over from 2019 into 2020. So why do we do that? We have projects that we get started and we're gonna use Public Works as an example. They may have a street repair project that gets started during 2019. We don't get it finished, whether it's due to early winter or whatever. And so we carry those funds over so that the project can be completed in 2020. During, um, with this um, ordinance, we are looking at a total of $16,824,480 across all of our funds to be carried forward. In addition, what's in front of you tonight for consideration are our supplemental budget adjustments. So typically with these adjustments, we have things that come up after the budget is created. And so there is an increase in our expense typically offset by an increase in our revenue. So these types of things are, um, I think the primary example would be like in stormwater. We have the example across a couple of other funds this year too, where we have received developer fees for certain projects. So we have um, almost the same dollar amount in supplemental expenditures that are um, in front of you, we have $16,339,000. Those additional expenditures are offset by additional revenue of $16 million. So in total tonight, we are looking to increase the expenses in our 2020 budget by $33,163,480 with an increase of revenue of $16 million for a net impact of $17,163,480. And with that, I'll take any questions. Council, questions? Nope. Nope. 
Um, open public comment at 712. There's no public here to comment, so we'll close public comment at 712, and I would entertain a further discussion or a motion, please. I'll move to approve ordinance number 1.539.1 on second reading. Second. Motion by Cheryl and a second by Debbie. <laughs> Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item seven. This is ordinance number 9.307 on second reading. Um, Jim, we have to have a motion to continue it or can we just continue this item? It's to be continued to April, a date certain of April. Yes, a motion to okay, so council, I'll need a motion to continue this item to a date certain of April 6th, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Debbie. Council, in just a sec, place your vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, oh, no? the, and the screen we have up is still for the Oh, there we go. Now the screen just switched. Okay. So revote everybody. Okay. Weird. Technology. Weird. I didn't really get the right screen. We'll see if it works. You did. Yeah. Um, okay. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item 7B. This is ordinance number 9.267.3 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance approving the second amendment to the agreement regarding designing construction of drainage and flood control improvements for Cherry Creek at the KOA property town of Parker agreement number 17-05.19C project number 106722 buy in between urban drainage and Flood Control District, the Town of Parker, and Cherry Creek Basin Water Quality Authority. Michael, tell us your last name one more time. Grab check. Grab check. It mm -hmm. looks so much more difficult to pronounce when you look at it than just grab check. 100%. And All it's right. got one and a half consonants. So oh, it's okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> or vowels, sorry. One and a half vowels. I know, I know what you meant. That's the sad part is I know what you meant. <laughs> All right. It's all yours. Well, thank you, Council, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you may recall, Michael Grabcheck uh, with the Stormwater Division of Public Works. Um, ordinance number 9.267.3 proposes a third amendment to an IGA between the town, the Mile High Flood District, and the Cherry Creek uh, Basin Water Quality Authority. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is to allow each of the four, uh, aforementioned entities to provide additional contributions to the project for the remaining funds necessary to bring the project through construction. This project is located along Cherry Creek, immediately south of the KOA property, tower property and west of the McCabe Meadows Park and Trailhead. Uh, the current project proposes stabilization of Reach C, shown at the bottom right there. Uh, Reach B will be stabilized with the development of the KOA tower property, uh, partially funded uh, by private development obligations. And Reach A, further downstream, is anticipated to be stabilized in conjunction with the Dransfelt Road extension. Uh, we are currently nearing a 90% level, oops, sorry, a 90% level design and are within the permitting processes with FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, this project is being implemented in conjunction with the Mile High Flood District and the Cherry Creek Basin Water Quality Authority, as I had said before, as project partners. Uh, more than 50% of the total budget um, for this project is contributed by those partners. We anticipate kicking this project off here in the fall of this year, 2020. So just a little snapshot of the improvements. Uh, this project proposes the construction of a single grouted boulder drop structure and four loose stone riffle structures. Uh, the upstream project boundary ties into the existing grouted boulder shown at the bottom right hand uh, corner there of the plan. Uh, a minor realignment of the active channel is proposed to provide additional buffer uh, from the taller vertical faces along the northeastern floodplain bench. Additional bank protection will be provided in the, in the form of vegetative and rock armory. Uh, so this project provides uh, many benefits to the town, including the reduction of sediment loading in, within Cherry Creek, 
It protects nearby infrastructure, such as utility crossings and a pedestrian bridge um, that are both within the project area. It, it extends in uh, protecting the current stabilization improvements in Cherry Creek, um, and it provides a tie-in for future stabilization downstream. Um, and it is also eligible for maintenance assistance through the Mile High Flood District. As you can see in this picture, uh, this section of Cherry Creek has bank cuts as high as three and a half feet, um, which is certainly not ideal. <laughs> it comes down to the money as always. Um, the project contributions with this IGA amendment. Um, so funding from the town for this project is uh, provided in conjunction with those partners. Um, the Mile High Flood District and the uh, Water Quality Authority will provide an additional $445,000 to the project with this amendment, and the town will provide an additional $400,000. The total project costs are anticipated to be a little over $2 million, including contingency and uh, construction administrative services. In, town, uh, in total, the town will fund only about 45% of this project. Uh, so before I get to any questions, I uh, just wanted to point to these two pictures here. Over on the left, you'll see uh, an exposed concrete encasement for a park of water and sanitation water line. Um, that's exposed from down cutting right through the channel center line. And then on the right picture, you can see the pedestrian bridge I mentioned earlier, along with that three and a half foot uh, bank cut. So nice. any questions? Way to put some emphasis right before questions. Right. Council, <laughs> questions on erosion? No? Yes. Yeah. Do you anticipate expanding the creek bed itself, and if so, by how much? So there will be uh, a little bit of minor expansion where it's narrowed down um, through sedimentation. But unlike the previous project I had presented, we won't be widening the floodplain here. Uh, Cherry Creek's a pretty well-defined corridor now, and um, there aren't um, you know major flooding issues within the town of Parker um, along this corridor, and so the project doesn't doesn't expand into that area. Got another one. Mm -hmm. So in this area, there's been a historic view that there's been quicksand with the shifting sands. Have you found anything like that? So I have not uh, heard of that just yet, but that is actually interesting and I could definitely, you know, see, um, especially with the sediment type that's in Cherry Creek, it's a uh, very loose sand and with the um, active flows in it, it could have that kind of feeling. Um, but not, not that I saw in any reports or anything. Okay, other questions? Mm -hmm. Can you go back to the uh, design drawing? Yes. And speak to the willow diversion? Yes, um, so as you can kind of see, the main channel um, as it gets to where, underneath where it says C-2, um, bends a little bit, and in this drawing it's planned south um, before kind of bending back up. And you'll see along the north edge, or the east bank of it, um, that is where the old channel, the old active channel was actually located. So it's right along this big vertical bank that's cutting in um, to that uh, property, the park property just south of the KOA Tower property. Um, so streams naturally kind of want to go their own way. Um, so in order to realign it, we have to allow it to have some, cap some capacity to kind of continue to feed in the old alignment, um, specifically to help the plant growth and keep those plants alive, provide a water source for them. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. So how many endangered species are you having to work with on this? So it is within the Preble's mouse habitat, um, but we are working with the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, this is actually a habitat enhancement uh, project, technically speaking. So with the plantings, um, the disturbance that will be uh, felt by the endangered species, the jumping mouse, uh, will be only be temporary in nature during construction. Um, but then after that, we have a few years of wetland mitigation plantings, and we put back all the good stuff we take out in addition to more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right, we'll open it up for public comment at 722 and close public comment at 722. Entertain further discussion or motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 9.267.3 on second reading. We have a motion from Josh and a second from Debbie. Council, please vote. I just want council to note that I did not say dendritic, nor aggregation, nor <laughs> Oh, hey, Now you've ruined it. Now you said it. We had an over-under going. 
<laughs> All right, motion passes unanimously. Cool. <laughs> Next item up is <laughs> is item 7C. This is ordinance number 1.352.1. Uh, this is a bill for an ordinance, or excuse me, this is a bill for an emergency ordinance to amend section 2.01.070 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning emergency meetings. Kristen. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Are you social distancing yourself in I'm that not corner? I'm to that podium. All right. <laughs> She's like, there's <laughs> no way right <laughs> I'm going to that podium. <clears throat> uh, section 2.01070 of the Parker Municipal Code code authorizes the town council to hold its meetings by telephone electronically or by other means when meeting in person is not prudent due to a health pandemic um, as you know we are in the middle of a health pandemic and this section of code does not apply to planning commission or licensing authority meetings and given the expected length of this pandemic we thought it prudent to adopt an emergency ordinance to um, allow those two entities to also be able to meet electronically or telephonically um, if they need to um, and so this is an emergency ordinance to amend the code to allow that to happen it will stay in place for 90 days and during that time we would need to bring back an or another ordinance for you to ratify it for it to stay in effect longer than that. I anticipate we will, I think that this is a good revision to the code. I think we will bring you back an, or, an ordinance to ratify it. Okay, questions for Kristen? <clears throat> None, open public comment at 724. Close public comment at 724. Entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve or approve emergency ordinance number 1.352. Point one. I'll second that. Motion from Debbie and a second from Cheryl. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item eight. These are our resolutions. This is resolution number 20-017. This is a resolution consent <clears throat> excuse me, consenting to the order declaring a local disaster emergency in and for the town of Parker, Colorado. Kristen. Uh, so this is um, in response to the, the pandemic. The town administrator on Friday issued an order declaring a local disaster emergency in and for the town of Parker. Um, she has authority to do this under section 15.14 of the charter and section 2.0302 E16 of the municipal code. And additionally, the Colorado Disaster Emergency Act provides that the principal executive officer is the one who declares a local disaster emergency. And that order remains in effect for up to seven days unless the town council um, consents to that order and authorizes it, its extension beyond that time period. So the purpose of this resolution is to notify council that that uh, local declaration was put in place by the town administrator uh, to consent to it and then to authorize it to be extended beyond the seven days uh, at her discretion. Okay. Council questions? Seeing none, we'll open it up for public comment at 726. Close public comment at 726. Entertain further discussion or motion, please. I move to approve resolution number 20 dash or 20 dash 017. Second. Motion by Debbie and a second by Josh. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Before we adjourn, just more for the people at home watching, this will probably be the last in person of this format type of council meeting. We're looking at opportunities for us to still meet for the council meetings and perhaps not have uh, uh, the public have to come in for it and have online opportunities for them to interact. So please watch our website on what's coming down the line for that. And outside of that, please wash your hands Go to the CDC's website. They've got information there. Go to Tri-County Health's website. They've got great information there. Estate. Social media is not a, a place with current and accurate information. Go to the source. Don't trust what your neighbor Karen posted from an article that she read on The Onion two weeks ago or whatever. HE is really good, too. I'm sorry? CDPHE, Colorado Department of Public Health. Colorado Department. Services. But just go to one of the main agencies to, to find information. And other than that, just take care of each other. So we will adjourn at 7.27 p.m.